Hello everyone and welcome to another Nejmedinov game to brighten your day. I hope you enjoyed the previous one. Uh, it's a game played in uh, 1948 uh, in a Moldavian championship in Kishinev and uh, Rashid has the white pieces against uh, a person called Vibaskin. This is the only game in the database uh, uh, Vibaskin ever played. So uh, as usual we don't have any data for, for such a player. Uh, that's why there's the hoodie guy again and uh, in the honor of the hoodie guy uh, I'm again doing a video uh, also wearing a hoodie. So without further ado, uh, let's uh, try and br brighten our day. Uh, Rashid has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Sorry about that, with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, the Italian game, bishop to c5. Uh, and here Rashid goes for not the Evans gambit, rather he goes for castles, the, the standard Gioco Piano game. Uh, knight to f6, we have d4. Uh, the dude's gambit and uh, when someone plays something like this uh, you know that uh, he really either either he considers himself to be much stronger than you or uh, he really uh, he really does uh, uh, try to create something like R Rashid uh, did uh, here you don't want to capture the pawn with the e pawn that just uh, ruins your pawn structure you don't want to capture with the knight uh, as this leaves your e5 pawn vulnerable so knight captures an e5 would come so basically what, what you can do is say, okay, that's a free pawn, I'm just gonna grab it, bishop captures d4, but, uh, you know, the downside to this is that you lose the bishop pair. So, okay, knight captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and now f4. Okay, we have d6, uh, f captures on e5, pawn captures on e5, uh, and now bishop to g5. Already with a double attack on the knight, and uh, although castling would be a bit risky here, as you do uh, now... Uh, uh, you know, a face uh, opening of the g-file, uh, but perhaps it's uh, it's not all that bad. But queen to e7 followed by developing of the bishop w would have been better and tried to castle on the queen side. Uh, here c6 was played. Uh, it's not it's not a terrible move, but it's a, it's a waste of time. Uh, here Rashid plays uh, queen to d3, uh, getting the queen out of the way as bishop to g4 was coming. Uh, and now black uh, has to decide what to do. Black continues again with bishop to g4, uh, trying to create some room on the queen side and perhaps castle queen side. Uh, Rashid keeps on developing pieces. Uh, if uh, if uh, black castles here, then surely Rashid would have opened the the uh, the g file with bishop captures, uh, but he doesn't. Here uh, probably want to play h6, either force Rashid to capture here, see what he does. If he cap, if he does, then you capture here and try to go queenside. Uh, if he goes back, then you you get some breeding space. Uh, here b5 was played, but uh, like in Morphy's knight at the opera, uh, b5 simply won't do. Uh, here Nezhmedinov played queen to g3, and queen to g3 is a uh, quite a complicated move. Uh, if you just uh, think about it. Uh, if you capture the bishop, for example, bishop captures, then uh, you leave your knight here vulnerable. Uh, then you, black can simply capture, and you leave your uh, uh, the bishop is no longer defended. Queen captures on e5 uh, doesn't really work that great because knight simply blocks, and here you don't really have anything. We have bishop captures, pawn captures, uh, rook captures, and after queen d4 check, uh, the queens are now exchanged. Captures, captures, and uh, at at the end of the line, white uh, white is simply down a whole bishop. So, uh, after this, bishop captures on c4. If black accepts this, then comes the bishop captures on f6, simply removing the defender of uh, the bishop on g4. Uh, queen b6 check, uh, queen b6 uh, preparing a discovery, uh, not grabbing uh, material immediately, but uh, queen to b6, this is, uh, this is what you have to play. And now, after queen captures on g4, now you have to find h5. This is the way to, to play this. Uh, queen moves and only now pawn captures, and now you see that uh, you know ev everything is fine on the board, black defended. Uh, but it's very hard to find uh, all of these ideas, so uh, bishop captures on, uh, pawn captures on c4 was not played, uh, rather uh, we have uh, queen to b6 immediately, now threatening discoveries. Uh, we have bishop to e3, uh, and now comes uh, queen to c5. Uh, capturing the bishop here uh, again doesn't work now because of queen captures on e5. Bishop blocks, you can block with the knight because the knight is now pinned. Uh, bishop e6, bishop captures, now you can simply grab it, queen moves, uh, and now after queen to g3, preventing castles, if castles then bishop captures here, uh, white, uh, black would have to castle queen side and then have to rook 8 to d1. Okay, the material is uh, even, but, uh, you know, black's king is uh, very vulnerable, Black uh, white is controlling the diagonal, the b-file is, uh, uh, it's a semi-open file, so white would enjoy playing this position very much. 
Uh, after bishop to e3, uh, queen to c5, now threatening to grab uh, Rashid's bishop on c4. And here uh, Rashid played a, a, a brilliant move. Here, I'm not even going to ask you to pause the video and find it, just uh, try to imagine a Rashid move. Uh, here, Rashid played bishop to d5. Bishop to d5 is a very nice move, uh, as the queen is no longer protecting the e5 pawn. So now the threat is, of course, queen captures on e5. Uh, you can't capture the bishop with the knight, then you, you're no longer defending the bishop on g4. And what happens after c captures on d5? Well, queen captures on d5. Now that you've captured, uh, the queen is also no longer guarding the pawn. Uh, queen moves, and now bishop captures on d4, as the knight is undefended. Captures, captures, we have captures, 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 and after all is said and done, the material on the board is equal, but uh, white uh, has a much better pawn structure. Uh, two pawn islands, black has three pawn islands, and the black also has uh, a doubled f pawn. So a better position for white, definitely. Uh, so after bishop to d5, uh, Mr. V. Baskin decided to go for queenside castle. Uh, we have rook captures on f6. Now removing the defender of the bishop on g4, pawn captures and queen captures on g4 with check. Uh, we have f5 and now the queen must capture on f5. If you capture with the pawn then you lose the bishop on d5. So queen captures, this comes with check. Uh, knight captures, queen, uh, <laughs> bishop captures queen on c5. Uh, we have captures on d5, captures on f5 and now a6. And although uh, Rashid after now all is said and done has a bishop and a knight for a rook, uh, this is far from an ordinary endgame, I assure you. Uh, king to f2, Rashid brings his king over, uh, you know, deeper into the position. Uh, rook h to g8, now comes a4. Uh, the queens are off the board, but that's no reason for Rashid not to attack. Uh, b captures on a4, and now rook captures on a4. King to b7, Baskin also tries to bring his king over into the game. Uh, now comes rook to b4 with check. King to c6. And now, what's the idea Rashid had? Why did he allow this? Uh, why did he check the king so king to c6 would be played? Uh, if you go uh, bishop to e7 or something, then after, after rook moves, you know, black will simply exchange pieces. Uh, if you go bishop to a7, uh, black can also simply attack the bishop. Uh, if you go back, then black will, of course, trap your bishop. But uh, Rashid's idea was something completely different. Here, Rashid played rook to b6 check. And now, you see the problem. Here, uh, the only move was to go back and then face a very passive position, a, a losing position at the that. Uh, but Baskin decided not to, not to, you know, suffer anymore. He decided to capture the bishop. And now, of course, uh, you can all see it. It's a very nice idea, a forced checkmate in three. Uh, if you're interested in some light tactics, feel free to pause the video and, you know, try to find it. Uh, so, okay, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, knight a4 with check, the rook is guarded, the, the only square for the king uh, are c4 and d4, king c4 was played, and now comes b3 with check. We have king d4, and now comes uh, rook to b4, and this is checkmate, as now the king has nowhere to go. The knight is controlling c5 and c3, the pawn is controlling d3, the king is controlling e3, and the rook, of course, is controlling the entire fourth rank. So this is the game, Rashid Nezhmeddinov versus V. Baskin in the 1948 Moldavian Championship. Uh, I do, do hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, uh, always, uh, you know, it's always a very pleasant thing watching uh, games of Rashid Nezhmedinov. So, you know, if you have a friend who enjoys chess, you know, do tell him about Rashid Nezhmedinov and perhaps, you know, show him a game or two played by Rashid Nezhmedinov so he can also enjoy them and also share uh, Rashid's games with his friends. And one day, uh, maybe if this channel really grows into a big channel, then we're going to do an official petition to FIDE uh, to grant Rashid Nezhmedinov uh, the title of Grandmaster. And not the honorary one, but the real one. So yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, <laughs> you know, a Nezhmedinov game to brighten your day. I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow with another Rashid game. See you soon.